SAS is my favorite way to author CSS. It's a powerful tool that can allow us to write CSS faster and to be more organized with better project architecture. When we're learning SAS though, we can actually learn some bad habits and make some mistakes that could lead to long-term consequences. So in this video, I'm gonna be looking at five tips that can help you learn SAS quicker and also avoid problems that might lead to some bad habits. Hello, my friend and friends. Welcome back to yet another video. I'm so glad that you've come to join me for yet another video. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel, I help you fall madly, deeply in love with CSS. And if I can't get you to fall in love with it, I'm hoping to at least get you to be a little bit less frustrated by it. And one way we can be less frustrated with CSS is by writing less of it. And SAS enables us to do just that. When we leverage those powers though, we can run into problems or we can get confused with how it's working. So let's dive into the first tip to see how we can avoid those types of issues. All right, so tip number one is to uh, early on in your day, make sure when you're working on things that you're looking at your compiled CSS. And the easiest way to do that is while you're working, I'm just gonna right click on my file here and I'm gonna choose open to the side. And that's my regular CSS file. And what that's doing is it's opening up, here's my regular CSS file, here's the SAS that I'm writing. And so let's just find my dot primary navigation. And here, here is what I am outputting, you know, what I have over here. And you can see here I'm using lots of variables. I have some nesting going on and I have a problem with my file. And if I'm looking here, when I'm looking at my nesting, it's not something that I might notice. I might say that everything here looks perfectly fine. But if I come and I look over here, you can actually see there's a problem with my hover and my focus because it's putting a space here after the A and it's making these like descendant selectors. So a focus and a hover inside a link rather than on the link itself. And that's because over here, I didn't include the ampersand. So if I come and include that and I'll hit save, and then it updates and it fixes those selectors over here. And now it's my A hover and my A focus. And that's a simple thing, but you might be doing more advanced things like creating a custom function, or you might be using loops to output more CSS. And that's really important to realize what the code you're writing is getting turned into because the CSS at the end of the day is the most important thing. And that's where you might actually end up finding out you're creating overly specific selectors because you have too much nesting going on. Or you might end up with other mistakes or other problems along the way that are being caused because of the way you wrote your SAS and the way it's getting compiled. And if you saw your CSS, you'd realize right away what the problem actually is. And moving on to tip number two, one of the things I really like about SAS are more specifically the SCSS syntax. And I'll mention a little bit the SCSS and SAS syntax in a second. But the SCSS syntax it looks a lot like regular CSS. And even if you wrote regular CSS, it's perfectly valid SCSS. So for example, if I came and I look at my skip to main, other than just using some variables here, this is completely regular CSS. There's nothing fancy going on here. I do have a use coming in here as well. But what I really recommend early on is picking one thing to learn and to get comfortable with. So maybe that one thing is going to be nesting, or maybe that one thing is going to be variables. And then once you sort of get used to that, you've practiced with it a little bit, you've added it to your repertoire, then you can go and add that next cool thing. And I know when we're learning, you might come across things that look like this and it goes, you know, you're seeing the code that it can output and you're just blown away by like, wow, that, you know, I can create these really interesting loops and mix-ins and all this other stuff that seems very exciting. But when you're trying to learn everything at once, it can lead to a little bit of cognitive overload. And it can also lead to some issues along the way as well, where you're trying to do a lot. You're, it's actually outputting bad code, but you're not realizing it because you're just focused on trying to learn so many different things at once. Try and take one thing at a time. Don't feel like you have to learn it all because that is the nice thing with the SCSS syntax. You just write regular CSS and you add in I'm going to learn my variables today. I'm going to learn mix-ins today, whatever it is. And a mix-in, you can do a very simple one and slowly add new cool tips and tricks as you develop them and as you get these new skills. And on that point, just really fast, not one of the tips, but this is the SAS syntax or the indented syntax, uh, which is the first syntax that came around. But you'll notice it looks a little bit different. It relies completely on, and actually we shouldn't have this here either. Um, it relies completely on indentation. Uh, for things like nesting and line breaks instead of putting semicolons. And I really like it. I think it looks nice and clean, but most tutorials, documentation, and other things you'll find will be using the SCSS syntax, which is the one that looks a lot like regular CSS and it's sassy CSS. 
And I've come to start using this one exclusively now just because then it's easier to go back and forth between your SCSS and regular CSS if you're doing that. Uh, and it tends to be more popular. So I, that's another reason I do use it. But again, I like this one a lot because when you're learning, you can just sprinkle in one thing at a time and you're not so focused on different stuff here. The one nice thing here is you take something, you tab it and then it's indented and then you you know shift tab it and then now it's not nested in the body anymore. So there's some really nice things with the indented syntax. Choose the one that you like better. There's not really a right or wrong, but just there are two syntaxes, but all with the same superpowers between the two of them. Now, my next point is going to be to take a look at trying to keep things as simple as possible when you can. And because when you start getting into these more complicated things, first of all, it can be a little bit overwhelming uh, when you're first learning them, but it can also be like, do you need all the complexity that's here? Uh, in this case, this actually does make sense and everything that is here has a purpose to it but it's very easy to run into situations where you're creating overly complex solutions for problems that aren't that big of problems. And it just makes the code really hard to read and to know what's going on and what the purpose of that code is. So, you know, just because you learned how to make an each loop or a for loop, does it mean you really need to have one? You might say, yes, I definitely do. And I use these things. So if you're going to use them, that leads me to my next tip of, when you get more abstract code, because you are abstracting things away, <laughs> um, what I would recommend is to use comments. And this is for yourself as well as other people in your team that might be using the code or come across the code. And so in a situation like this, where it's this, uh, I'm using a media query that I'm creating my own mix in that's going to be for uh, bringing in media queries. And I have a lot of things going on here because uh, you can really come in here and just go like check if the breakpoints map has size. And so it's going to say, we're checking here if the value somebody spits in has that size. And then if it does, we're going to output the code here. If not, is the value, is the size a valid number? And then if it is, then we can do that. But then we have an error that comes in, uh, make sure that include a unit, you know, so then we could even do here. If it is a number, does the number include a unit? And then we can double check for that. And then finally down here, you could then just say like, you know, well, I don't know if we need a comment there, but just to comment the code that you're creating. And the same thing here where I'm creating all these custom properties and stuff. And so in this case, the comments I put are to myself because I'm actually doing the same thing a couple of times or similar things here uh, in a few different spots. And it's because I wanted to remind myself of the different things I was doing for when I'm teaching the course that this lesson is part of, or this code is part of. Uh, but yeah, leaving different comments in the code, especially when they're more abstracted away things is always going to be a good idea. And when you go to do another project and you're bringing in the same code you used, you know, three projects ago, cause it's doing exactly what you need it to do. It's really good to have that comment there to remind you what you did six months ago. And my last tip is actually going to be less focused on SAS itself. And just on, if you are learning SAS, you're adding SAS to your repertoire, you're taking that next step in your development journey. And so the last tip is actually not to use an extension to compile your CSS. It's instead to use the command line or to use build tools that rely on the command line. And I know for me, when I first started getting into command line stuff, it scared me. I still generally don't really like living in that world. It's just not my type of thing. Uh, but a lot of people really love using extensions to do things. And there's good extensions out there. Do, do be careful with the extension you're using. The most popular one doesn't support the current version of SAS and has all sorts of issues with it. But uh, yeah, I'd really recommend learning how to start getting into the command line and doing things there. Maybe you're going to set up with a build tool or bundler like parcel or roll up. Uh, you might be using gulp. You might get into the world of Vite. Whatever it is, I really recommend going that route rather than using the extension because this is where things are going to go. And that's another skill set you are going to have to learn anyway. And learning the very basics of it for SAS and to compile your SAS, it's actually really easy to do. There's not a lot of steps to get things up and running, at least for very basic things. And that's another one of those areas where you can just slowly add small things to level up rather than just getting wholly invested into some of the more complex solutions that exist out there. And as I mentioned, I am working on a course. It is a course not entirely about SAS, but how we can use SAS to be more productive, to be more organized, to build things like design systems and go beyond that, diving into the world of post CSS and more. 
If you're interested in that, there is a link where you can sign up for updates just down below. And if you'd like to know how to get past using an extension and start doing things in the command line, I have a video for you right here that you can check out. And with that, I want to say a very big thank you to my supporters of awesome, Jan, Johnny, Stuart, Tim, and Doug for being my supporters of awesome over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.